Hello and welcome back to another SyncRaft tutorial. I'm Abel, Product Specialist at Zeiss. Today we're going to show you what a reflective marker configuration is and the best practices for this type of setup. Selecting the reflective configuration option will put the system into reflective marker tracking mode and will utilize the system's ability to track directly from IR markers that are illuminated by infrared light. In this mode, SyncRaft will detect and use circular reflective markers that are placed in a non-random pattern. This mode takes a bit more time to set up compared to a natural marker configuration but it is more robust, requires less maintenance, and is aimed at a more repeatable, permanent setup. SyncRaft will specifically only look for reflective markers within the environment, and will utilize the camera bar's built-in IR emitter to illuminate these markers. The cam bar will now only track these specific IR markers. The IR emitter intensity can also be adjusted from within the software, depending on how large the studio space is. The use of IR markers allows the system to be used in environments that have harsh lighting changes and extremely dark spaces. So let's jump into the software and create our first reflective marker configuration. Within the trackings tab, we go to add tracking configuration and select reflective markers. From here, we can name our configuration and select the camera and lens combination that we wish to use. And remember, this will be the initial camera and lens used from our equipment tab, but you can change this freely once past this stage. We now hit save and activate. Once we reach the dashboard, SyncRaft will prompt you regarding the steps to take for the reflective marker setup as mentioned, using reflective markers is more robust and requires less maintenance, but for the initial setup, you'll need to place and learn the markers. Within the Place Markers tab, you'll be shown a grid overlay, which should be used as a guide to place your IR markers. A green section indicates sufficient coverage, and orange indicates that you need to place one or more IR markers in this section of the grid. It is important to remember that when learning the marker positions, that the cam bar is pointed directly at the markers and leveled flat to ensure optimum visibility. The IR intensity can also be adjusted for maximum marker visibility, ensuring that all markers can be detected. The camera rig can now be moved around the space freely to identify areas that require more markers. Remember, you don't need to place markers in areas where the camera will not be used. Once you are happy with the IR marker placement and coverage within the space, we can now learn these markers. The reflective markers will be learned by the system and added to a locked point cloud. We can unlock this at a later stage if we want to add more IR markers to the point cloud. Now we're in the Learn Marker section. There are a couple of things we want to ensure before starting. The cam bar must be locked at a fixed height and our minimum and maximum range should be set. Setting the range allows you to specify an exact depth that should be learned, ensuring no false markers are added below or above the height of our actual markers. You can see that as I scale the minimum range, the cam bar frustrum moves closer or further away from the IR markers. We want to ensure that the detected green markers are within the correct range. Here, you can see the live change within the software. Once we complete the Learn IR Marker process, we can now save our locked point cloud. We can now run through our CAM bar offset to calculate the physical position between the CAM bar and the main camera. This cam bar offset may be slightly different to the natural marker configuration as your cam bar is likely to be tilted upwards at the ceiling. 
but we will use the same process using the CAN bar offset assistant. More detail on this can be found in our CAN bar offset tutorial. Now that we have completed the offset, we should see this applied to our CAN bar and main camera in our 3D view. Next, we simply set our zero point. The zero point is a reference point that is set within scenario. This reference point will direct the render engine where to base its content from. We can now move on to setting our world alignment. This is where we change the position and orientation of our zero point. We can head over to the edit world alignment tab to start this process. We have a few options and tools to set the zero point. First, we have set zero point to an IR marker. This is the quickest and often easiest way to place a zero point when using IR markers. We can simply click on an IR point that has been identified by the CAN bar. A yellow cone will indicate where you are going to place the zero point. Once selected, you will see a white cone aligned to this point. You should see the alignment in the CAN bar feeds immediately. Now, since the zero point is selected on the ceiling, you will need to tilt the camera rig up to see the zero point in your main camera feed. Next, we have floor orientation. This allows us to adjust the floor plane along the X and Z axis so we can tilt our zero point. Here, you can adjust the floor height. When we place a zero point, we are telling the system where the floor plane is. If we want to place the zero point on the floor whilst in reflective marker mode, we cannot tilt the camera rig down to allow the cam bar to see the floor. This will result in a loss of tracking as there are no IR markers. In this mode, we can simply take a measurement from the CAN bar to the floor plane and then manually offset the zero point height to match this. If you have already set a zero point on an IR marker on the ceiling, you could work out the distance from the ceiling to the floor and then offset this manually. Next, we have move zero point on floor plane. This simply allows us to move the zero point along the floor plane along the Z axis without adjusting the height of the zero point. With this, you can fine tune the X and Y axis of the zero point to an exact position. And here you can fine tune the rotation of your zero point. Once happy with the position of the zero point, we can now save this alignment. Our setup for IR markers is now complete and your tracking is up and running. For more information, please visit our website. Thanks for watching this tutorial and we'll see you in the next one.